Normal Christianity is Spirit-led Christianity, and this is Living in the Spirit. In the episodes of Living in the Spirit, we're going to go on a journey and discover what living free really looks like. Is it possible to live a life by design, full of purpose and impact? Do you desire for more, more meaning, more peace? We're going to learn how to live an unrestricted, spontaneous life. And we'll discover our true nature and purpose and access the life we're meant to live. Isn't it time to live life different? If you desire to be mentored and shown the keys to living an epic and overflowing Christian life, then join me for Living in the Spirit. Because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. Living in the Spirit. I, I, I believe, okay, with all my heart, and I've manifested this before, that the body of Christ is, is the church, okay? That's more than that. I believe that when Jesus was talking about the body of Christ, he was talking about us manifesting Christ, right? On yes. one level. Yes. But on another level, the body of Christ is an experience that happens in our body. Yes. Okay. Oh. And I know, I know for sure that if there was some form of uh, electrical machinery to measure this, right? I'm sure that this, I could prove this, right? But when you are immersed in Christ, the physical, tangible presence of God influences your body, your mind, your thoughts, your speech, your actions. I'm a hundred percent. I, I believe that the, 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 the Christian experience is not just in the mind. It's literally in the body, right? Now, why I know this was because in 1999, at four o'clock in the morning, I heard a voice, right? Yes. Yeah. I heard a voice and, it, and it, was an, it wasn't the inner voice. It was an audible voice. <clears throat> and it says, Steve, awaken. And, and I said to my wife, did you hear that? And she was like, no. So I went back to sleep and then I heard it again. And then I asked her again and she said, no. On the third time, I heard it louder. Okay. Yes. And this voice gave me specific, um, a very specific thing that I needed to do. It said, go to this particular park immediately. And I said to my wife that day, listen, I'm not going into work. I trust what I've heard and I'm going and I'm taking you with me. And I took another friend of, actually a cousin of hers that we were looking after. So anyway, this particular park was where I used to pray. Is where I used to go to pray alone. Yeah. So I went there and when I got there, near the pond of the birds, there was a very unusual man, okay? And um, so I said to my wife, look at that guy. And all of a sudden he opened up his arms, Dave. Yeah. And all the birds came and landed on him. Right? They just landed on his. He went like this. Okay. And, came. and so that intrigued my wife and I because those birds are not that trained. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <clears throat> when I got to him, I sat down by a bench and he I didn't know at first who he was, right? But he was a man, he looked ancient. He looked really old. He had eyes that were ablaze. His hair was completely white. Okay. Mm -hmm. He had completely fiery skin. I can't explain it to you. Right. Yeah, yeah. And he sat down, he came over and he said, he said, I have a message for you. And I, so I, so I still didn't clock on. I, I just thought, Oh, wow. That's really interesting. <laughs> so he says to me, do you mind if I pray for you? <clears throat> and I said, no, 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 go ahead. He says, take your shoes off. I said, but it's a park. He said, no, where I'm about to pray is holy ground. Is this, it's like Joshua. Yeah, so I didn't, I, look, still, look, I still didn't register. I just thought, this is a normal guy, right? Yeah. Anyway, when he touched my head, this, 
incredible electricity passed through my body. I can't explain it to you. And his prayer was very simple. It was very, it was no, there was nothing of great power about it. It was, he just, he just prayed very whispery. And it was, let this soul surrender. That's all it was, wow. right? Anyway, this electricity, it just covered my body, right? So then he got up and he looked at me and he grabbed my face. Like he grabbed it like, and when I looked at him, I said to him, who are you? And he said, I'm a messenger. I still didn't clock on. And he says, I walk to and fro the earth. And I come to those who need prayer. So I know I was like, but who are you? And he said, I only come to those who really need it. So anyway, right. So my wife was there and we were talking and like really like I was like completely in peace, completely. When we turned, he'd gone. It was not there. It disappeared. That's amazing. Right. And what I realized from that day forward, that his physical body was different. He, he had the body of Christ. Wow. Right? He had the body of Christ. Yes. And from that day forward, I started to understand that Christ, the Christ experience has to touch the physical body. He spoke like the master. He spoke like the rabbi. He touched like Christ. He, he looked like Christ. That's amazing. Do you, do, you, do, you, do you understand what I'm saying? I do. And Steve, if I can track with you here, okay? Because this is what's going through my head. A couple things was when he rose from the dead and he was walking around, they didn't recognize him. Yeah. Right? But then they did. And I've often wondered, well, what was that? Because obviously his body had changed, but at some point they quit look, they quit perceiving with their souls and they perceived with the spirit. And it was like, it, it clicked. But then I've always been fascinated with Romans 12, and, and, and we always talk about transformation by the renewing of the mind. But what's it start with? This is now submit, therefore, your what? Bodies. Bodies, yeah. And so I've always inquired of him, and I've, I have, what you're saying, he's been speaking to me about, because I had a situation where I had something growing on my arm. Okay. And my wife wanted me to get it looked at. So I just said, Lord, what, you know, I was praying one day. I was like, Lord, I don't want to go to the doctor. I trust you. Tell me what's going on here. And he gave me the picture right off the bat of the woman touching his him. Right. Okay. So I, I, I went and read the story and the other that kept sticking out to me was touch. She touched his him, touched his him. And I was like, well, what's that mean? What, why the him? And I couldn't find anything. So I finally found it in numbers, uh, chapter 15. And it just talks about remembering. You know, just who God was. And he said, what did I tell you to do? And I said, you said, do this in remembrance of me. And I was like, you told me to do communion. So he says, yes, take my body. So I started, and my family and I, to this day, we do communion with my kids every day. And every day we say, Lord, we exchange these bodies for your body. And I did that, Steve, for 30 days, and I would tell that thing to leave. I said, you're illegal. This is the body of Christ. My DNA is changing. And it went away in 30 days. It just completely disappeared. It's amazing. So I only, and I don't mean, I normally don't elaborate because the interview is about you, but I want to confirm because that, I, I just believe there's so much more of what we're allowed to experience. I know you said it's about eternity, you know, this growing into this, this, this thing ongoing but I believe he wants us to experience as much of it as we can on this side not for our benefit but because that manifestation of the sons of God like if we really allow it it will so much of what people wrestle with will melt exactly you think I mean you can elaborate on that thought if you no, want I, I just think look if alignment is very important okay, okay? and Jesus alignment was always with the father Oh. Jesus was never concerned about anything other than the words that I speak are my father's, the thoughts that I have are my father's, my intentions are my father's. So he wasn't concerned about 
money and clothes and fashion and politics. He was purely aligned with the Father. He yeah. was at one with the Father. Yeah. And for me, that was the desire that Jesus had. That was his, that I, I call it the yoga of Jesus, right? Yeah. Yoga union. Yoga means union. Yoga means union. I didn't know that. Yeah. So when I, when people say, did Jesus have a yoga? I say, yeah, he had a union with the Father. I didn't know that. And in John chapter 17, he says, guys, my desire is that you will become one with the Father as I was one with the Father. So I believe that that alignment is the most important part that we surrender our wills and align ourselves to Christ. That's, it's really it. It's really surrendering to him on a daily basis and, and seeing his nature and just aligning ourselves with that. You know what, that was one of my questions was, what does it mean to have union with God? And it is that, that, that fusion. And so, um, so, all right, I have a couple more questions. because I don't want to take your whole night. I mean, I have sure. a feeling, Steve, I could talk to you all night, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I feel we will one day. <laughs> I would love to. Um, so then, you know, I, a couple themes keep happening is this understanding your nature. That's why I love them. Tracking the Holy Spirit here and the simplicity of this thing. So I want you to talk about a couple things about like spiritual warfare and the concept of, oh, the devil. I mean, because over here, it's the devil this and get deliverance. And, and it just sounds to me like it's a lot more simpler than that. Or, I, look, I, 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 look, for me, right? If we, if we have to look at the example of Christ first and foremost with the devil, right? Mm -hmm. First and foremost. So the way that Jesus, his relationship with the Father was the most important thing in his life, right? That alignment that he had. And very early on, you see the work of the devil was trying to abort that. Okay? You see that Lucifer was working in Herod. So they moved him to Egypt, right? Yes. Then, 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 you know, then Jesus spends some time with his natural parents, and then he goes into the wilderness. Lucifer turns up, right? Yes. He tries to again disalign the work of God. He tries to separate Jesus from the love of the Father, right? Again, Jesus overcomes it. And, and, and you see that Jesus, Satan is doing that right till the point that he thinks that he's won at the cross, right? Yes. He worked through the disciples, Judas, etc. Yeah. And he thinks that he skillfully won the battle, right? Yeah. <clears throat> Finally, he realized that he's been crushed, okay? Jesus completely abolishes the work of the devil, destroys it, all right? Yes. When I mean it destroys it, he makes it of none effect. Wow. He then says, not only is it of none effect, it is void. <clears throat> Revelation says, when you see him, you'll go, you'll, you will say, was that him? <laughs> right. In other words, he's a joke. Yeah. In other words, why on earth are you wasting your time on something that I've totally destroyed, made of none effect? Why are you even contemplating this, this entity that you're going to laugh at one day and go, is that him? Wow. It can't be clearer than that. The same deception, the, the, the deception that Satan has is, is we giving it time like we giving our ego time. It's food. So that's, that's really what spiritual warfare is. Yes. Warfare is he's trying to get you to stare at your ego so you don't stare at Christ and fully develop your nature. That's yeah. what warfare is. He's a thief. Yeah. So he, that's he, all comes, it is. he comes to steal our true nature. By getting us what, distracted. That's all it is. That's and that's the uh, that's why I say to you, watch the pray. That's amazing. The so, watching the watching is one of the this is why I believe that someone said to me you sound like a Buddhist Christian, right? And I said, what do you mean by that? <laughs> and he, he said, you're always talking about watching. I said, yes, of course. He, I said, watching is, it is my warfare. That is my shield. That is my sword. That is my defense. Observation of my ego 
which is what gives Satan room to manoeuvre, is my is my self defence. Wow! It's like it's like when you drive a car, right? Yes. The most important thing are the mirrors and the windows. I mean, your whole and the windows and it's yeah. and it's peripheral vision. Yeah. That's watching. Yeah. If I suddenly put you in a car and blinded you and said, "Okay, drive down the 101 in California," you'd be smashed. Yeah. Right. right. And so, so for me, the watching is the spiritual warfare.